Hey. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? You look very scruffy. Uh, well, you know, it's it's July in Mexico, so it's like San Francisco. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> really? It's cold and rainy right now. I would not have expected that. Yeah, it's the elevation and then it's the rainy season, so all the hurricanes create uh, cold summers here. Wow. I thought it was, a, I thought it was, I just assume everything down there is warm, so. Elevation. So we're, we're higher than uh, Denver, we're, you know. Really? Yeah, we're like 9,000 feet. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, um, and we're in a basin, so uh, during the summer it gets so hot that the, it builds up a convection and then it, then the storms come in and cool it off and it starts all over again. Was it originally built on a lake or something? Yeah. Which doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. <laughs> anymore yeah. We're all sinking <laughs> into <Yeah>. the pool. <laughs> Such exciting things. Uh, uh, just so you know, um, so like I'm going to focus on like just a general basic history of like, you know, school, what kinds of things you did professionally, and then we'll go into your art career, <clears throat> um, talk more about your subject matter and uh, the themes, like I'm, I want to, I want to have a conversation about um, uh, about nudity in artwork and the significance of it within the queer community, and then how it's evolved and things too. Um, and uh, I'd like to talk about your collaborations uh, with the poetry um, and uh, just the new directions that you're talking about. Some of the sculpture work that you've been uh showing the relief work that you've been doing and the th things that you're planning on moving into and um and of course we're you know artists so we'll and then we'll open up the floor and let other people just ask questions and stuff i planned it for an hour and a half but i don't know that it will go for an hour and a half so um, all right so we'll see <clears throat> I, have a, I have a friend do you know uh nelson Menares? that name is very familiar he's a queer artist he lives in palm springs he's going to show up at some point cool because uh, he and i are going to go afterwards and oh okay so he's going to show up there yeah. and then uh did he is he bringing like his work with him too and we could just include him into the <laughs> no, 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 no. that would be really yeah. funny he's just the one walk in that's who it is i just think it's like a like a mr rogers neighborhood or something you know people just show up and you know. yeah, yeah. Oh, hi how are you doing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We had a one of our incubator groups, uh, like I guess it was in June, and the residency was full, and we were in production. And I had the group that night, so I ended up spending the entire like time just walking from space to space, and then like it, it just felt like a Mr. Rogers sort of thing because it was like a it sort of felt like a talk show because we were just going and you know oh hey how you doing what are you working on you know <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> From the photos, it seems very large and very sort of spread out. Uh, yeah, the spaces. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's like catacombs. It just it goes up and down. There's stairs everywhere. It drove my mother absolutely insane. She was always lost, and she hates stairs, so um, that was a little hard for her. So, um, is the air conditioner too loud? Oh no, uh, laundry hand. No, mine is mine too loud. Uh, no, I can hear a little bit of the air, but it's not it's not disruptive. So, yeah, it's a laundry bin with photos rolled up inside of it. So, we're you know Saturday we have the our closing with the gay men's chorus, and we have a queer market and all this um, stuff happening. So, uh, I have all this artwork, um, your piece included, which I'm going to put into a room and try to sell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Still, you know, still just barely making it to me, but at some point I definitely would like to come down. Well, we'd love to have you. I know we were talking about like uh, Christmas time, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we're in the process of combining the 
uh, all the we're moving one of our residency spaces from the front gallery to the back so all the residency will be in one space and then we're going to have to list it on airbnb as a private apartment because we're, we're just not booking enough uh, residency business at the moment so um and then you can make a lot of good money though that way yeah yeah so i'm hoping that will help sustain us a little bit better okay i see people are starting to show up so i'm going to start letting people in okay We'll just we'll pretend like we're talking shit about artists the entire time. Like, <laughs> people are like, like ah. and then do you believe like that diva, like what she did? <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know, I know so many people. I think I told you last time we talked that I know so many people who who moved there. So oh, to Mexico City or Mexico City seems like to be quite the burgeoning scene. Yeah, I think uh, at the beginning of the pandemic people were moving here because there were less restrictions and if they're going to work online they could still enjoy some things um whereas if you're like in new york or la everything was locked down so severely but not so much here <laughs> so um so a lot of people started moving here and it just be it's just become a trend um there's actually signs up all over this neighborhood right now about like uh gringos gentrifying and you know like some anti anti um, gentrification uh, language out there. So um, anyway, people are starting to join us. We're just having a casual ch chat here. I don't, um, you don't have to turn on your video um, and we'll keep everybody in mute for a little while. David and I are just gonna, I'm gonna interview David. I, I've interviewed David before. Um, I was just watching it today because it was like, God, when was the last time I interviewed you? And it was literally like, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I think we we're maybe two weeks into the pandemic. Yeah, it was. Has crazy. anything changed since the that time for you? <laughs> you know, actually, I, I actually started to work a little bit less. You know, because I told you I, I'm thinking of the next series and stuff like that. Uh, but that whole period was just crazy. It was twelve hours a day, every day. Yeah, when we were talking, it was we were both doing 16 hour days. Um, and then I think I was really good with doing that for about the first year of the pandemic, like just trying to keep myself busy enough to not like, you know, get absorbed in whatever was happening outside the doors, but um, for the first year, and now I'm, I'm much, I'm much less uh, strict with myself about my about my uh, production. You have so much to manage there, right? Yeah, this is, yeah, this, obviously this is a lot to manage. I do, I do manage to get my, my work in, but even with that work, I still am always constantly putting boundaries. I'm like I can't, we can't do that. No, I'm not gonna be able to do that. There's just not enough time or energy in the day. Um, so uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, you were, you were pumping out like a painting like every three, four days. Yeah, no, I, uh... I did that for four years almost. Right. Minimum 12 hours a day. And then there was periods where I was trying to get stuff ready for a show. And so I would work on a 24 hour clock. I would work for six or seven hours and I'd nap for two hours and I'd get up and work for another six or seven hours and I'd nap for two hours. And I did that for weeks on end, uh, trying to get ready for a show. But for the most part, it was, yeah, 12 to 16 hours a day nonstop. I did. 175 paintings, uh, you know, most of them, you know, three foot by three foot or larger. 75 paintings in what length of time? In four years, yeah. Four years, okay. And that's all the series that's in the pool? Yeah, because they each take about 150 hours. Um, and they each, because I, I typically I rotate paintings in and out, so, um, on average, there there's one done every two weeks, but I can be working on three to five at a time. And I should say we're lucky to have we're lucky to have one here. Um, we so I, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because I think I, I I'm so familiar with you that I sort of skipped over the the introduction of of you, David Jester. David is coming to us from Palm Springs, California. I think when I met you, you were in San Diego, uh, yeah. California. Yeah. Um, and that we have a common relationship with Dab Art in Los Angeles. Um, we both shown with Dab Art, um, been in the same shows before uh, the show. 
which I think the last time you mentioned that, I was like, I was? I don't remember. Wait, what happened? <laughs> it was an online show, like at the beginning of the pandemic, I think. So well, that year, I did 27 shows in a year. Oh yeah, no. I mean, you're very prolific. I mean, you you you've had a you've had a very uh, prolific four years. Um, so you you were from San Diego originally, correct? I was born in Palm Springs, but I was raised in San Diego. Okay, born in Palm Springs, raised in San Diego, and uh, you did an undergraduate and a graduate degree in art, or just a graduate degree? My undergrad was uh, BCU in Virginia. Okay. Because um, uh, I moved to Virginia. I'm losing a little bit of your audio. Some of the Are you sure you turn off the air conditioner. Uh, the air conditioner is starting to interrupt a little bit, so I don't know if it changed. Uh, that should be better. Is that better? This is why everybody pays uh, such big dollars to see our productions because <laughs> it's, all, it's all about that. Uh, so, uh, and then you moved to Palm Springs. How long ago? I moved to Palm Springs right at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, at the beginning of the pandemic, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not because of the pandemic, but you had already... I always wanted to live here. I always feel like I, I came to Palm Springs a lot and because I was born here. I always felt like it was another loop every time I did. Ah, okay. Do you have a lot of family there still or...? No, no. Okay. And how do you like Palm Springs? I love it. You love Palm Springs? You're a hot weather, hot weather guy. I am, you know, it's a whole NBA. Uh, and in grad school, I did the uh, Rutgers for grad school. I was fucking freezing. <laughs> I think, you know, the thing is, is like when you live in California for a while and then you try to move to the East Coast, it, it can be a little bit shocking culture wise and just weather wise and everything. I, yeah. I, when I moved to Connecticut for six months, I, I was, uh, I was miserable. It was like there was hurricanes and blizzards, and I was like, "What's up with all this weather?" <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, yeah, know, it, it has its own beauty, but I, I, I definitely found myself more attracted to the West Coast. Um, and then, so um, after Rutgers, did you, did you start out as a professional artist? Did you do something different for a while? No, my, uh, uh, my husband uh, had two boys. Uh, biological children um, and uh, I went uh, I tried doing the art thing at the same time I did the corporate route uh, just because of the kids trying to support a family and that sort of stuff right right uh, but once the kids were grown up and out of the house um, I was free to sort of focus on art you like that you went crazy you're like we're turning your bedrooms into art studios we're breaking down the yeah. walls yeah, well, I think that's why I was doing 12 to 16 hours a day, like every single day. Like in, in each of those years, I took off maybe 10 days at the most. Yeah. I just kind of worked nonstop. Yeah, I, I did that when I was career, more career oriented. I ended up working 80, 90 hours a week and never taking my vacation days. So every time I left a job, I always had like months of vacation uh, to take with me, which was always great, but never resulted in more vacation for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and I was pretty successful in the corporate world, uh, but I was miserable. You know. What were you doing in the corporate world? Uh, I was a producer for Sony. Oh, okay. Producer of? Commercials and documentaries and oh, okay. things like that. Stuff all to promote uh, Sony Electronics brand stuff. So you can so you can hook us all up with discounts to Sony still or I, I used to be able to, that's for sure. That would be like the one question, you know, like when I was in high school and I worked at Cinnabon, my mom was like, bring the Cinnabon homes or where are you working now so we get a discount? I would like that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, so you're in Palm Springs now, you've been there for four years now. And I mean, the motif of your work is very very Southern California, but I mean, it must it must go go over re very well in Palm Springs. <laughs> you got plenty of you, you would think so. No, I I sell like so that I've done 175 paintings and like 130 have found homes, but they found homes in uh, Malta and Germany and France and England and Australia and everywhere but Palm Springs. Really. Right. Well, I have a few collectors in town, but but pretty much uh, they've all lived. Well, this is my friend Nelson. I told you he was going to show up. Hi, Nelson. Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, uh, yeah, so what was it? What were we saying? I don't remember. 
Oh, uh, we were talking about the market in Palm Springs. Um, for oh, yeah. So I, I did, I did have, I was in two galleries in Palm Springs, uh, but they both closed down during the pandemic. Apologies, I turned off the air conditioner because of the noise. Yeah, perfect. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, about 20 minutes, we'll, have, we'll, we'll do like a two minute air conditioner break. It is 108 degrees outside today, so. But, uh, um, uh, but both galleries went out of business during the pandemic, so I just started pushing on Instagram uh, mainly, and that's where I've done all the sales. And, and so Instagram has been pretty successful for you. It's amazing. Yeah, I couldn't live without it. I still can't remember how I met you. I, I think I met you through Instagram, but I met you through um, another artist maybe or something. I, I, I don't remember. I mean, I, I feel like we've been connected for a really long time, but I, I can't place how. You know, I, there's probably just an old soul thing going on or something like that, too. <laughs> there's enough, enough similarity there. Um, and so uh, I want to talk about your, your pool series and the significance of the pool series. Um, and uh, how, how did you get started in it first? What, where, did, where did it start? So, I mean, you know, Growing up, my early sexual experiences were always playing with other boys in pools. And so I think that kind of put the thing in my brain. But in um, grad school, is it grad school or undergrad? I think in grad, in grad school, I started doing large installations and they were small. They were rooms that were like 16 by 18 that you would walk into. And there were murals all around. Mm -hmm. Um, and there were in the murals, there were these guys coming out of pools. And at the same time, the floor was, was painted like water. Oh, okay. so the idea was that you were, uh, you're looking at these people, these others, these other people in this other world in the pool, but we're all in the same pool. And it was that, that kind of body of work was about, uh, acceptance and, uh, shared fluids and shared experiences and that sort of thing. What, like around what year would that have been? Oh gosh. Uh, uh, Just get a sense culturally what was happening. 1995, I think. Okay, so sort of towards the beginning of actual medicine and for yeah, and also the sort of beginning of inclusion in society. Right. Yeah, I'm more Will, people Will, and, people. Will and Grace era. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, <laughs> that would be appropriate. Yeah. Um, uh, and so uh, I, then I went to the corporate world, like I said. Um, and so then when I was when I was thinking of starting a new body of work, which is just crazy because I went and bought these four by four foot panels, I was a sculpture major, so I had had no painting experience really. Oh, okay. And I liked sculpture because I was a printmaker for thirteen years, and and I had all these other experiences in sculpture at that time at Rutgers was very inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, and you could have, you know, printmaking elements or video elements or whatever you wanted in your installations and they were fine with that. Whereas the painting department wanted you to only paint. Ah. So that's why I went the uh, sculpture route. Uh, but uh, I totally got myself lost again, sorry. But- uh, We were going to the part to how you started the pool paintings. Oh yeah, yeah. So when I came back to uh, art and bought these big empty panels, the pool was a great place to start. But, but really when I started them, it was, it was about community and inclusion uh, like it was before, except it was more about this community, this isolated community of, of gay men mm -hmm. and all the varieties uh, uh, of, that we, you know, all the beautiful rainbow that we are. Uh, uh, and it was a way to isolate the community and talk a little bit about how we present ourselves or how we treat each other uh, uh, inside that community. And then I think we've talked before about this. One of the things I loved about the pool was that if you're in the pool or you're outside of the pool looking the other way, you have a very distorted view of the people on the other side. And I, and I felt like that, in that sense, it was a great uh, metaphor for the, this gay community with the straight world outside kind of thing. 
interesting. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, obviously blue is the water, but the saturation of the blue, does that have a significance too? Um, it does. I mean, there are things that are at play in these. Um, there are, uh, you know, because uh, in school, I liked playing with the idea of rescue. Uh, and so there are, you know, floaties or things in the pool that can sort of represent rescue. But mainly, uh, the sort of main thing you saw particularly early on was you would see a lot of pool cleaners. And the pool cleaners for me was, uh, uh, came from uh, being HIV positive for, gosh, now 30 some odd years. And the, the desire for cleanliness mm -hmm. and how that plays a part. That's like, sort of, are you being, your personal desire for cleanliness or like a cultural desire for cleanliness? Cultural, you know, so, uh, you know, a lot of the, the sort of the impetus for this was uh, how I was seeing people treat other people in the apps, you know, and I think the series now is not negative or critical, but it definitely started from that sort of kernel of a thought of, you know, uh, we spent all these years trying to gain acceptance and now we're sort of, you know, discriminating, discriminating discriminating against each other. But uh, so the are you clean thing was definitely, a <laughs> but there's other metaphors in the pool. Uh, certainly a lot of the tiles are actually HIV molecules early on. Uh, there are things in the pool, um, you know, beach balls and, and giant flamingo floaties and stuff like that, that sort of, you know, speak to other things. You know, um, uh, I try not to be too didactic in the metaphors. Mm -hmm. I try to let people, you know, come to their own conclusions. Uh, and I certainly have, you know, all these things are about where they start for me. Mm -hmm. But they mean so much, you know, more things to other people. You know, I, I've had, you know, uh, interesting encounters with people who come to shows and stuff like that and their take on it just blows me away it's so different. Can you, can you share like a favorite one that you uh, favorite one well i mean when uh, mine i guess I... no i mean so there are really great ones like particularly the ones where i remember there was one guy who was uh uh he was an old guy and he was a lifeguard his whole life and so for him he had a completely different take on what the stories represented uh, and I've had other people who really pick up, who really, really pick up on the, this light as a sense of spirituality or uh, a spiritual nature that, that's playing on all these bodies and stuff like that. Um, and I definitely have a lot of people who pick up on the purity. But then I also have, uh, I had that one show, I think I told you, where uh, there was uh, 15 paintings in the show. It was a solo show and uh, there was maybe three that had dicks, right? Uh, and I had someone who had been in touch with me for a long time, really anxious to see the work. And they walked in and they were like, oh, I didn't realize you were a penis painter. And I, was, and I looked around and I was like, <laughs> three of them, what are you talking about? You know? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, could you, would you like to show your penis? And maybe I could, perhaps I could paint it right now. Right? <laughs> like a carnival and you're a penis painter. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, some of them certainly do. Like the two that are behind me right now for sure do. But, um, you know, it's just funny, you know, it's like uh, people definitely bring their own experiences to the paintings and get their own interpretation of them. Well, nudity in, in queer art specifically has significance historically and it's changed quite a bit. I mean, what's your, what is your relationship to that sort of genre within queer art that's like the erotic sort of can be more sexual nature well i totally love all that but my intention with these was never to be erotic it was to be more like they're they're naked because they are as they are born they're vulnerable um i find them intimate i don't find them or i i mean they're nude and obviously you know there's well endowed men and you know uh gorgeous men in your paintings and everything but when I look at them, the the word that comes to mind to me is intimacy. Um, yeah, I think there's something about that closed world that you have people in that's almost like being in outer space, but in a in a in a space that we know, 
uh, here on Earth, but we but we don't go into so frequently that uh, maybe it's in some ways it looks like outer space or it could be outer space if, uh, you know, as a child, you know, you jump in and it would be this whole other world below that you escape into very, you know, sort of interesting that way. Right. Uh, one thing that I like, and I think that sort of mitigates that sort of eroticism is that they're very confrontational, you know. What do you mean? They're not always looking at the viewer, but a lot of times they are. And oh. so, um, it's uh, it takes away the objectness of them in a way. Interesting. Okay. It masks it. I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, you look at them and it and it feels like you know, like people could imply sexuality more to it, and I I love the. I like this one just for the sense of humor of it. It's just this ideal of like, you're not supposed to be looking, you know, from the outside into this world, you know? Yeah, well, it's sort of like a hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Right. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, queer art in the 90s was very different. I mean, I think our relationship to the nudity and sexual aspects of the, of the art was a political statement. It was really, you know, fighting for the right to um, to be able to have sex and to be able to have relationships. Things have changed so significantly, and in some ways, it feels like with things like monkeypox and stuff. I'm like, I feel like we're having a some sort of flashback or something. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, but um, I feel like um, things have changed, but I feel like it's still so important to be visible. How do you think? How do you think it's changed uh, in terms in the in terms of the art world? Um, in terms of the way that we, as a queer community, talk about our identity through nudity and sexuality and artwork specifically. Well, I mean, uh, it was you know it was very fetish focused before, sure. I think. and now it's kind of like. Uh, I see a lot of work that's just, it's like, it's coming out, just showing people how, how everyday life is for sure. Isn't that interesting? Like it felt, it seemed, it felt like everything had to be exaggerated and theatrical in the eighties and the nineties. And now you have like, you know, photographers maybe who are just showing daily life, like showing the norm normalcy and the family life and, you know, the sort of documentary aspect that's just like casually like, this is just life um, and that's how things have changed and evolved uh, in the queer narrative but I also see a lot of uh, political art coming up in the last you know five years specifically six years maybe related to like the election of Trump and you know women's rights being violated and queer rights being challenged and trans rights uh, as part of that um, so I think it's interesting to see how the political aspects refer back to those aesthetics from the 80s and the 90s and they're they're sort of replaying a, a little bit right now too which is exciting to see people using art for activism do you consider yourself an activist you know my my work was certainly more i mean i do to a certain degree and that's that sort of uh, visibility is a form of activism but um but i I'm, you know, about to start a new series that's going to be more direct about it. Tell and me about that. Well, I mean, I'm still sort of trying to get things sorted out of my head, but I know that, um, I know that, uh, so there's going to be, a, a, the pools are ending for sure. There's, there's still some things I want to do. There's a couple like sort of sub series that are coming. But then I want to build on that idea of community, but more like how I view community or how I how I accessed a sense of community. So that's kind of the direction. And I don't really have more than that to say. I mean, I have some ideas in my head for sure about. Well, you must be. I mean, you've been you've been painting in the same sort of area for four years. So yeah. I, I would imagine uh, I'm. I, well, in a similar way, I'm going through a transition within my own work, and I find it creates a little bit of anxiety because there's something about the known, even though I would constantly challenge myself in the work to push the technique and like 
uh, context and conceptual meanings and things like that. But so I would always felt engaged, but I'm at this point, I think after the pandemic where I don't want to work with the paper in the streets anymore. Um, my relationship to the streets has changed to crowds of people and all that. So for me, there's a little bit of anxiety because it's like, oh, you're letting go of this thing that has been successful and you found a way in, and there's this unknown in front of you. How are you addressing that with your discipline? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's uh, it's a little scary in the sense that the, the these paintings have been well accepted and they have paid my rent and put groceries on the table and all that good, good stuff. But um, just time for change, you know. I mean, I, I started experimenting with a few things. Uh, there was that painting I did probably two years ago that was Americana kind of thing. Mm -hmm. it was the people in the the room uh, ignoring what's happening in the on the TV kind of thing? And there have been other kind of forays where I I know it's time to move on, um, but I'm just haven't been sure what the direction is. And then it's only recently that I really felt like, you know, I, I really have a, some ideas in my head. I don't want to really say them because I'd rather show them once I Oh, and then, and then it's like, if you say it and it changes, you know, yeah. and, you know, it's and that in the process of discovery, I mean, are you, are you spending time researching? Are you going to yeah. museums? Totally. Absolutely, I've been, uh, you know, a lot of research and research were gathered. Um, and um, uh, this series, you know, starting the pools was, was challenging because like I hadn't been formally trained how to paint. And um, so I, I spent the first year sort of developing the language, right? Figuring out what that language is. And I think also that's another reason why this series needs in is because those first you know, three and a half years, it was so, each one was so exciting. You know, I think I told you this before, I, I had told a friend that it was, it's a bit like a bunch of one night stands, not that I, that I generally do one night stands, uh, really, but, uh, you know, for two weeks, you go to bed, and you, you think, oh my God, I can't wait to wake up and see the painting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then you, you love it, you hate it, you love it, you hate it. You get so excited that you feel like you can't paint fast enough sometimes, you know what I mean? But at the end of two weeks, you hang it up on the wall and you're on to the next guy, you know? And, and then you pass by the, that older painting and you go, oh, hey, how's it going, man? And it's just kind of like, you know, uh, it doesn't mean the same thing. It's the new one that's so exciting. Yeah. But I feel like those sort of challenges that make it so exciting are, are, are not really there for me now with these paintings, these cool paintings. But when I think about the new series, when I start thinking on the sort of ideas that I have, I get just crazy excited. So you're used to having how many pieces um, going at one time then? Three to five. And right now? Uh, right now there's just two going. Yeah. They're at the end of the series, right? So, yeah, there's two going. There's, uh, I'm focusing on the sort of sculptural elements right now. Okay. I'm trying to get those done. You know, I'm, I'm doing my own version of uh, Ghiberti's Gates of Paradise. Oh, okay. Uh, and so uh, it's going to be a door uh, with two sides uh, and 10 panels on each side. Wow. that are from this series. And it's kind of like an introduction to the show. Is this the relief sculpture that you've been working on that you're talking about or? It is. So when you see those relief sculptures, they're actually going to be in a door. They're going to be the 10 panels in the door. Uh, so I'll, I'll, it's going to be wood, but I'll faux finish the, the door. So it looks that sort of gray bronzy color. Okay, so this is, this is wood? These, these are metal and epoxy. Oh, okay. Like metal powder and epoxy. I brush the metal on the surface before I mix the metal and then pour it, uh, pour the epoxy with the metal powder in it. Um, but this, this, these sort of kind of spiraled into other things. So the same rubber mold that I make to make these, 
I'm pouring wax into. Uh, and uh, the waxes, I'm going to make glass pieces out of because I have a kiln outside. What is the scale? Of this? So these are 10 inches. Okay. Uh, they're 10 inches a piece. So there'll be 10 inch round glass pieces that I'm going to oh, be doing. Lovely. And then I, I cut them down uh, after I finish with the rubber mold. Uh, I have one going right now, actually. Uh, I cut it down to size and then I do plaster molds of that. And into the plaster molds, I do porcelain slip. Okay. Uh, and so then I'm doing these porcelain tiles that, that I sell individually, but I think I'm gonna do some sort of installation with. I'm not really sure where that's gonna go. Uh, this, um, it, it, they, uh, when you say circles and glass, it makes me think of bubbles in the water. Yeah, I don't have one to show you right now, but uh, we can we can always go to your Instagram and uh, keep up with you on your Instagram as well. So I'll put that. Yeah, up. <laughs> I think there may be some waxes on Instagram buried down below. Buried down below. But yeah, you've had Instagram drama at different times, so where you oh, yeah, yeah. act and. Had to start all over. Again. I got hacked. I had to change my name uh, once because a Christian group and God knows where had told everybody to go to my thing uh, and harass me, which they were doing like five minutes every five minutes. I would get some sort of nasty message from all these people. So I had to change my screen name. Uh, all sounds so very Christian though. It was very Christian. Uh, I had to change my screen name so I could get uh, some peace. Uh, and then there was once I was in a show in LA uh, and this uh, Korean Baptist church went in there and put trash bags over my painting and another oh, person's painting. My gosh, that's your, your uh, Maplethorpe moment, you know? Yeah, it was just really strange things, you know? It's, it just sounds so retro when you say these things. It's just like, really, that's what we're still, in LA, right? In LA, LA, all places too. Like it's just like, man, they must, those those uh, people. They must be very frustrated if, if they live in LA, like the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I know it's crazy, and those people also harass me a lot. But right? They they didn't like. I think the last people who harassed me, like I said, they must have published the, my screen name so that everybody could go to it. That was different than what I experienced with that other group. It's so, it's so, I know it's frustrating and everything, but it's kind of like, oh, I've made it, you know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been harassed and hacked. Or <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to be clear that I am not inviting harassment or hacking um, on my pages. Please do not, <laughs> do not. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole, the whole like experience, the whole journey has been really interesting. All in all though, uh, it's been an amazing experience. So the, so uh, I mean, at the when we talked at the beginning of the pandemic, it was just it just felt like such a different world um, out there. I loved it actually. I mean, because my life didn't change that much. I'm not very social and I sit inside and paint all the time. So for me, that was great. I actually I tend to wake up at like three to five in the morning, because I like it really quiet. I like the world quiet. Uh, and so things are really quiet. Now my friends, on the other hand, were going crazy, you know, but uh, I'm just not that social. So for yeah. me, people, people have responded in very, in lots of varieties of different ways. Um, yeah. for sure. I like, I've, I've discovered I, I generally work during the day, but I, I've discovered I actually like working at the nighttime, but it's because I have a four lane highway in front of my studio uh, balcony here. So it's so so much more quiet at nighttime. It, it's easier to concentrate. So um, anyway, but anyway, I want to go into your collaborations that you do because you have this entirely different Instagram. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about this project? So that one, it's another one of those things, you know, it's like the reason the takes me so long to get to the glass or anything. There's just so much that I'm trying to do at the same time. That was another thing that's sort of back burning right now where um, I invited poets to write poems about the paintings. And the intent was eventually to, uh, to do a book that's uh, paintings and poems. 
Um, the, I, you know, I did all the research. It's going to cost me about seven grand to do the book. So I just need to do like a GoFundMe or something for it. Uh, but it's definitely something I need to get to. But, but I really did enjoy it for about two years. I was really active promoting it with different poet friends and stuff like that. Um, and some of the poems are just super cool. Really, really cool. And, and it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about how, how people have different interpretations of paintings. Well, well here it's actually, you know, it's mm. through creativity where you can actually see what they feel about the paintings. What is the collaboration like? I mean, are they just sending them to you, telling their, you, oh, this is, I'm writing this about this, or are you engaging the writers and asking them to write too, or? A few I engaged, but most of them, they came to me, and I would just say, pick, pick any painting, and, you know, write something that you feel, you know, speak to the painting. I love it when you get to ex have some sort of experience of the way other people experience your work. Like it's so unusual. We tend to work solo so much, you know, that we don't we don't uh, experience uh, other people's viewpoints necessarily through their art. Like it, another painter doesn't take your artwork and put it into their painting <laughs> uh, necessarily. Maybe. Do you have any copiers out there? Are there people out there like? Oh my God! So I have people who who screenshot my images. Uh, and post it as theirs with the signature, or post it as theirs and do a really bad job of the signature. Uh, oh. You know, it's just the world we live in. It's just like when I was a teacher, and you know, like somebody would plagiarize or something, and it was always, it was never like clever plagiarizing. It was always stupid. It's like I can't. Mm -hmm. you're, I would respect it if you were smarter about it, but like just yeah. the fact that it was so easily traceable and so clearly. Theft. I, 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 you know, I want to be able to respect my criminals. You know, right? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I'm enjoying the talk. I want to open up the floor to um, the people who are here. Everybody at the moment has their videos off. You can, you can either uh, leave your video off, um, and if you want to, just send a message in the chat with a question, or uh, turn on your audio and ask a question of David. Let us know who you are and where you're where you're calling in from this evening. <laughs> it's like that awkward moment at the sixth grade dance where the boys and girls have to mingle. I know. <laughs> Any questions out there? <laughs> How life was before social media, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Before, before social media, I, it makes it a little bit easier, uh, some somewhat in social media. Um, any uh, pressing or non-pressing questions? Any? Oh, I see Cliff. Hey, Cliff from Mexico City. I can even turn on my video too. Hey, uh, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful work. And uh, you know, I would just really say that I experience it as being um, activist in its nature. The um, positivity, the body positivity. So just really appreciate that. And um, I think that so much of what we're still facing as queer folks is um, still expressed in here and st still so needed with this. So thank you for your work. Love it. Oh, thank you. Hey, that, may, that reminded me when we spoke a couple of years ago, you were talking about the ideal of, uh, of uh, including more uh, people of color and more diversity within the work. And I, I I, I didn't review your work to check your percentages or anything, but I was just curious, you know, how that how that uh, developed for you if the opportunity came through. It was good. You know, the only uh, folks that I had a hard time uh, getting to pose for me and actually show up to pose for me was I had uh, um, uh, a few uh, FTM folks uh, who were supposed to, and like I said, I was just sitting there waiting for them to show up and they never showed up. But well, I think that would probably be a very challenging. So that's a that's a big. Uh, it's a big ask. Yeah, it's a big ask. A I think it would be. I mean, I I just think about how I would feel. Like I I'm so self conscious about my own body. So um, how do you make your models feel comfortable in the situation? Or they just automatically come comfortable? They're like, hey, 
I'm coming from the nudist camp next door, so. <laughs> so most of them are pretty comfortable. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I ask people or people approach me, um, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's, we all suffer from that sort of uh, body image thing, you know, so that, that does play a little bit, but I just really talk to them about their experiences or where they're coming from. And um, I always come to a session with poses in mind. Do you uh, take the photos? Mm -hmm, photos and drawings. Okay. Uh, but um, I like, uh, once I sort of have that sort of safety of getting the images that I want, I like sort of doing poses that I, that I think are more based on their experiences. Mm -hmm. And then always makes them feel more at ease. You know, they feel listened to or seen. Yeah. And those are usually the ones that I, that I like to paint. I mean, I would think that that's sort of like a, a photographer's technique just to try to uh, get people comfortable with the with the camera lens. Um, I wonder if the, I, I would I would think the water in itself would be kind of soothing as well. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about uh, publishing with uh, photos and sketches of the pieces to see the process or is that just not a. No, that's kind of my thing, right? I don't know. I feel so like after you die, we can come to your apartment, like take everything out. No, absolutely not. I destroy stuff. I really do. I <laughs> There's no it. evidence left. I. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like that process. Although I do share a lot of the process on Instagram, you know, this is in progress, particularly the clay pieces lately. Um, I don't know. There's part of it that's just for me, right? Right. I think that's a, I think that's a a really important aspect of a of a practice. It's like within the, within the residency, we we do talk a lot about like you know recording process and speaking about materials and different things too. But there's always this part that needs to remain like protected and secretive. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't. Oh, uh, Cliff, you're raising your hand. Yes, I'm being polite. Um, so well, I was curious about your work and when you talk about starting, you know, the, the pool series for you has become, um, you know, that, that chapter is closing. It sounds like there's another edge. I'd be curious to hear about the, you know, what was, what was the edge that you were crossing into as you came into your work in the pool series and what's the edge that you're, that you're leaning into now as you close this chapter and come into what's next. And I'm thinking about this in the context really of, um, you know, as queer folks, how we show up and we might become more and more bold about how we show up, about what we wear, about how we express ourselves, where and when. Um, what are those edges for you now? Um, so I feel like, I feel like the pool series was pushing my personal boundaries from a technical perspective, right? Because I wasn't a painter. So uh, there was so much that I needed to learn or teach myself. Um, and there was also the sort of discovery of the proper language for the series. You know, like I feel like they're each a piece of communication and there is a language about them, right? And there's a language that runs through all of them that makes them feel like they're cohesive with each other, right? So I feel like that this series in particular was really pushing my personal boundaries and certainly was like, oh my God, I'm not a painter and I'm putting these painter, giant paintings, not just small paintings, but these really big paintings. So it's like, if it's really bad, it's gonna be really big and really bad, right? Um, uh, and so that was the sort of journey with this and that's kind of feels more resolved for me. Uh, and I'm so happy that I took on that challenge. Yeah, uh, the new series for me is going to be uh, pushing boundaries uh, in a more personal way. Um, and, um, um, you know, like when I was in school, I would do work that was, I did uh, a bunch of school desks. I made the desks and then each desk was like a portrait of a child and what that child become when they become older. 
um, gay, straight, whatever, addicted to things, not addicted to things. Um, and that work was uh, less subtle than the pools are. The pools are more subtle, right? And so I want to move back towards the less subtle work, although I don't want to like hit people over the head with things per se. I, I want some subtlety, but I, I just want to push things more in a more direct way. You know, these, these uh, paintings can be like wolves in sheep's clothing in a way in that they're beautiful objects, but they're in a lot of them, there are really serious subjects at play, but it's so subtle. And so I just want to move to a different place. Like I think of like uh, Hugh Steers or Patrick Angus or, um, you know, those guys. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I've been a long-term survivor for over 30 years. And I, and I feel like the new series is going to speak to that a little bit. Uh, and also speak to, like I said earlier, my sense of community and how I accessed that my life and how I'm accessing it now um, and so I just feel like it's going to be amazing and cool right <laughs> sounds amazing and cool yeah well, and uh, we're all in life transitions right so things are things are always changing evolving I mean yeah. the person that we were in college is hopefully not the person we are today too so yeah no totally uh, Anna, you had a question. Okay, hey, hello. Um, Hi. I'm from Mexico City. Hi. Hi hello. I um, I just want to congratulate you, uh, your work. I I can see um, a lot of of the shadows, like in this one or that one that you have in, in either in the body or in the water, I think is it, um, it opens up a new, uh, another world, like, like if you, there's an, a, wor a world outside and it's inside as well. And I found it really, really amazing. And um, so I, I didn't understand all those shadows that you see in, in the bodies and in the water, you do this with photographs, with, um, from photographs or? Please start with because uh, I have my master's uh, and did a fair amount of life drawing and even taught life drawing at uh, Monmouth University and different places. Um, I have that experience, but when I started out doing pools, there was so much that I couldn't wrap my head around with regards to the way that light plays on bodies underwater. Um, uh, and so they, they all started with those images that I would take with the models because I just had to get my head around it, you know. It wasn't, uh, they look easy, but it wasn't an easy thing to understand, particularly at the beginning, for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How do you get past the fear when things aren't easy? Oh, so that's a great thing about oils is you just paint over it. <laughs> <laughs> like a life Photoshop where you just undo, undo. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's what I, I love about painting, really, honestly. It, you know, there's paintings under paintings. There's paintings I just didn't care about that much and I would just paint over them. Right. So. Uh, Doug, was, Doug was actually asking a question about your process because he asked if you, you, work from, you work from photos and then you do the sketches and then the sketches become the paintings, not the photos directly to painting. Correct, yeah. And uh, because, you know, uh, you have to, uh, it's impossible to direct. You can give a model direction before you get underwater, like each time you throw up air. But it's um, impossible underwater to give direction. So uh, the drawings sort of make up for what you can't tell people to do. And a lot of times they're my hands or my feet or whatever that I draw afterwards because I just never really got the model to do exactly what I wanted them to do. Interesting, so you're able to resolve the compositional issues, yeah. uh, not like trying to be literal with, from the photograph. Yeah, or even, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of times where there's sort of a kernel of something in a photograph 
mm-hmm. but compositionally doesn't work or you know there's something about it that I don't like and that's where the drawings and the the you know the heavy lifting is on the painting side you know that's where it really too resolves like I have a uh, for above water looking in the pool I have a great camera but underwater I have the worst camera it's just horrible grainy fuzzy images but um like an old like uh, cell phone from the 90s or something <laughs> right so it's a fuji but it's just not a great one um and um but i like that i, I like that the the painting is where the work is and that the painting is where things get resolved so I, I like I'm I'm interested in the idea that you're able to modify the compositions to continue developing the story because a lot of artists when they work with photographs they tend to stick so closely to the photograph um, that I feel like it could be kind of it could become kind of boring it would, like sort of like a factory sort of uh, approach to it or something yeah and I think that's part of it too it's like I want to keep the sort of excitement and the challenge of it up but um i definitely frankenstein these things a lot um, and the photo is just a starting point right i think i think it's very interesting uh doug was also asking if you do uh, paint at the pool or just use camera camera to sketch so you but you you paint in your studio you're in palm springs you can't paint outside no you, can, you can sketch at the pool for sure but uh no you don't want to paint outside um, that, that'd be, that would be painful. <laughs> so, it's too, in the winter, the paints, you know, take longer to dry and I like it better because it gives ah. time to sort of balance the different paintings. Interesting, but, interesting. In the summer, everything dries so fast. It's crazy. How important is uh, scale to your work? Because you do work in a fairly consistent size and scale. Scale is very important, and scale changes in these pieces. But scale is also relative to what the message of the painting is, right? Uh, you know, some kind of smaller scale, someone's isolated, mm-hmm. farther away, as opposed to someone being close up, kind of thing. Well, I'm. I mean, I'm excited to see what uh, what comes from the new work. Uh, Me too. I'm really excited about it. Unfortunately, I, I'll be posting more just sculptural stuff, I think, on Instagram for a while while I sort of develop these. Of course, of course. But like secretly, you're welcome to like send, you know, like messages on the backside or something. You know, like oh. your close friends uh, feature on, on Instagram. We'll, we'll all be happy to join that list with you just to get a yeah. secret view. Um, you, know, I, 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 was, I meant to mention at the beginning that you've been in two of our shows. You were, I originally interviewed you in April of 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic and then you were in existimos um and then uh, of course at that time the show was supposed to be in june with pride and then after several shutdowns and everything it got we ended up it was actually the first physical show in the gallery here and at that time we were still uh just Pro- proyectos residencia mexico um <laughs> and uh, nobody could ship their artwork so we ended up doing all uh prints of all these paintings like framed prints and uh, and it was a you know it was uh it was challenging because it was uh, only by private appointment of course and we i think i think if we saw 100 people during the two months the show was up that that was that might be a miracle um um, but uh and then we have this painting that you put into that was was that what show was that this year you were in another show this year was it in April or February? I think you were in the February show here. Um, but this was also in Manifiesto. I think yeah. the Manifiesto, the second queer show. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, you have you have a long history with it. And and uh, this Saturday at the closing of El Futuro is queer, um, the gay coro coro will chorus will perform at 5 p.m. sharp. So don't be late because we're gonna hold everybody downstairs. And at 5 p.m., we're going to open the doors, and the course is going to start. So as you're entering, they're actually going to be singing, um, because we don't know uh, how many people to expect. So <laughs> I, I imagine it's going to be a, it, it's a free concert. So I imagine it's going to be well attended, and um, we'll have your 
two pieces, the print framed and then uh, this original um, on wood panel uh, available for sale as well. But we're going to set up a room um, with a bunch of uh, a limited edition photo prints and various different things uh, that we have in our collection that artists have donated um, through the last couple of years and everything to try to um, raise funds. We'll have um, uh, we have our liquor sponsor. Um, uh, and then we have a beer bar and we'll have Indian foods and sweets from Bagels La Poo, um, Angel Rose Universe, uh, a, a performance artist from London will be uh, doing a performance in one of the studio spaces and then uh, presumably one of our other artists residents will be uh, presenting new work as well. Um, we had we added a couple pieces from the beginning of the show. Uh, for pride as well. So if you have seen the show at the beginning, you should come back because there's uh, Javier Ocampo has a brand new sculpture because we sold one of his sculptures. Um, so he replaced it with another sculpture. Um, so there's lots of new things to see. That's the point to that. Um, and uh, we also have tons of other kikis uh, coming up. I, there's so many windows open on my screen right now. It's hard to find my navigation but uh, we do have several uh, kikis coming up they're all listed most most of you here registered through this page so you actually got to see these but we do have several different people that we've worked with uh, through the residency robert roush is going to be doing a, a show with us in september um, so we're actually in the process of planning that it's going to be a really uh, beautiful show um, centered around his own uh, identity and coming out of the closet and um, all the different issues uh, as a, a, a mature man uh, coming out of the closet uh, from a conservative community. Um, that's a that's a that's like a lightning rod, a, a, a like a, a, a very deep pool to keep with the pool metaphor um, to, to pull from. So um, and then several other artists that we've shown uh, here um, that are part of the residency community. Um, uh, um, uh, Doug, uh, who's in this call right now, will, will be a part of that too. Um, so we have lots of different, uh, lots of different uh, um, kikis coming up. We're we're uh, opening up our space for the community as well in different ways. So we have uh, the Hamelas, the uh, trans um, uh, twins, uh, who come to many of our shows and have shown here before. They're going to be doing a life drawing. Uh, course on Saturday, starting in August uh, for eight weeks. You can go to one week or all eight weeks if you want to. Um, and uh, we're just we're uh, kind of we're kind of blowing it out. We're like we're going to have some cocktail parties and do a whole bunch of different things to just to keep the space active because people come to the opening and they'll come to the closing party. But like in between, you get like the spattering and like it just drives me absolutely crazy to have all this beautiful art around and. You know, I, I want to share it with everybody, and so I, you know, people don't uh, necessarily uh, take time to go to galleries and stuff. So I want to make sure that we create some events around it to, that make it more fun as well. Um, and then November, December, we have our life, uh, death, and art uh, show. Uh, we'll be exploring the themes of um, the ephemeral themes of life. Um, so that's going to be a in juxtaposition to the Dia de los Muertos. Uh, celebration going on in Mexico City. Um, we are not doing altars or, um, you know, sort of the traditional Dia de los Muertos things. We're really looking at it from uh, different cultural points of views because we can walk outside the door and see perfect examples of, of the, uh, the traditional Mexican perspective. So I want to um, open it up to the world and see what kinds of interesting things uh, we have there too. And also, I just want to point out that you can go onto our website into the store and download our catalog, which gets updated <clears throat> which, with each new show that we do. Uh, you can uh, come back and download it. So currently uh, it has everything up through El Futuro and we're consistently, every month we publish uh, an updated edition of the catalog. So inside of that, you will see uh, video interviews with our artists and um, uh, it links to their artsy profiles and the work that we are we have for sale from them there and other things too so um and we have a huge robust library on youtube uh, filled with interviews where you can find david jester um as well from april uh, 30th of 2020 um, when that was published uh we are we're all so much uh, more mature and uh, uh 
uh, um, calm than we were in April of that year. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting to go back. I, I went to listen to it today um, just to remind myself of all the things that we were covering. I think we spent half of our time talking about uh, the coronavirus and it, it's kind of interesting to hear our perspectives uh, and, and think about how things have changed so much in the last couple of years. Anyway, David, thank you so much uh, for coming and uh, sitting with us and talking about your artwork today. Um, and I, I, I can't wait. I hope that you do come to Mexico City. Several, actually, several of the people here in, in the group tonight are in Mexico, uh, Mexico City. Um, so uh, if you come, we'll do a dinner and invite everybody. Um, yeah. You get to meet these like nameless, like you're like, who, who are all these people talking to me from afar? Cliff, Cliff will be here. You know, we'll bring, we'll bring in everybody. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, please uh, let me know if you um, have any questions. I will be sending a recording to you at, since you, um, since you uh, uh, paid to be in this. So I will share the recording with you guys too. So you can keep it for your records and go back and look at it. And if you have any questions or anything, reach out to David. David has tons. David, you have like like at least sixty of the uh, water paintings available right now. So get them because it's the last sixty. He's moving on. Yeah, I have like forty, I think. Yeah. Forty. Okay. Okay. Math was never my my strong suit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank everybody. You so much for having me. It was nice meeting everybody. Bye bye. Bye. bye.